Are these new fangled things any good? Orbital Industries. It's a space management sim where you manage and build a space station, balancing resources and missions in space. Let's start with the positives. When I first saw this game, I was really taken aback. It looked so polished and really looked quite different. And it's that difference that drew me into the game at first. Its art style is quite something. A kind of quasi-realistic but simple design showcasing your space station floating in orbit of a planet, presumably Earth. And a really lovely looking wiring section that glows and hums which is just really enjoyable. I must say as well, the sound design is a really nice touch. Having each of the sections of the game sounding very obviously different help you really navigate the UI which I will come back to. I also really enjoyed how open and expansive this game felt. It had quite an easy and simple tutorial, which really opens up into some good freedom. You can also break the tutorial a little bit, so I would advise following it really carefully. I found the wiring section of the game to be my favourite, especially with its efficiency percentage. I love making sure everything was as efficient as possible, and then for me, that's where I find the fun. The game itself consists of you building and managing this space station whilst you jump between three main sections of the game. One, which is a very much UI filled landscape of different resources and missions you can do. The second, which is the space station itself from the exterior, which you can add on building components. And the third is a wiring section in which you have to wire up and link all of your buildings together. All of this in the end is managing and balancing your resources. <laughs> now it's time for the things I'm not the hugest fan of. Upon launching into the game, the opening credits and loading logos were very laggy and a bit weird. After that initial commotion, however, the game ran pretty smoothly. I had a few frame drops if switching between menus too quickly, and often once reloading the game I found it would keep flickering and get stuck in a loop for about 2-3 to three minutes where I couldn't press anything, but then it would be totally fine. So I wouldn't call the game buggy, but these were definitely uh, very annoying bugs I encountered. Now comes my least favourite part. The actual menus in the UI system. I always try to play these games in handheld mode and on TV to really get the full experience, seeing as the Switch is so versatile. My problem is that I'm not too sure how this UI was designed to look best. The UI isn't the majority of the game, but you have to navigate through these menus to do really anything within the game, and I just find them too small, slightly hard to read, and quite cluttered. Another issue with the game that links in with UI uh, is the controls. I can see that the devs really wanted to explore the full range of controls and give you a plethora of options to play with. But it means they're not very intuitive, and so you have to have a constant reminder of the controls at the bottom of the screen. Again, this feels cluttered. Even after a couple hours of gameplay, I still couldn't remember which buttons were which, they never really came naturally to me. I really feel the menus in this game are what bring it down. They're really annoying to navigate and just hard to see. In handheld mode, I could see them but I was really holding it quite close to my face. But once it was on a TV and I was sat at a sofa distance length away, I just couldn't really see them. And I do not need glasses. The last thing I'll say about controls and the elements I don't like is for the building section itself. As you are building elements to your station, you have different connecting points. And you have to jump between those connecting points to then build onto that. This jumping mechanism comes in the form of an orange line, goes from the middle centre point of your screen to whichever bit you want to jump to. What this means is you have to quite precisely angle your ship by rotating it in space, or really struggle to get the bit you want to move to. A much simpler way would just be having the idea of the ship on a grid, and you just jump through quickly all the different parts to where you want to go, rather than having this kind of leapfrog effect that made it just really confusing. Spinning round your ship in space as well was not the most intuitive and so when trying to, while well, I want to attach something over here, it just took twice, maybe three times as long as I felt it should. It never really got intuitive for me. So the game is now fully out and costs around 16 British pounds and for me that seems like a lot for this indie title. I can definitely see that you could create a really huge and ongoing space station, but I feel like the middle to end game need a bit more development. I also feel that though there is a lot of replayability, I don't know how much replayability there is in terms of not just doing the same efficiency every time. Unlike other games where there's building and management, where there's elements that change, a lot of the missions were so interchangeable and kind of constant that I don't really see what new replayability could add or change for the game. 
I also do feel that indie titles of this size on the Switch do tend to be overpriced. So if you're wanting to support the devs and you really think this game will be for you, I do fully recommend it for that. I do believe that this is a good game, and especially if you can get past some of those UI issues, it can be the perfect one for you. If you love space and wiring, this is a great game. The gameplay is solid and fun, but especially as someone who's dyslexic, I find it not super accessible. Orbital Industries is a game unlike others. Let's see what else the devs can do.